Hi, my name is Ken Milam. I'm an application engineer here at Thermopor. Welcome back to Thermo TV. In the first segment of the series, we described a water molecule as a molecule bearing a positive and a negative side. In the second segment, we'll build upon that knowledge to explain surface energy and contact angle. Okay, so here's the premise that we'll use for this tutorial. Everything in nature has a desire to reduce its energy level or its energy state as much as possible. Let me say this again. Everything in nature has a desire to reduce its energy level or its energy state as much as possible. Here are a few examples that illustrate this principle. Things that are hot cool off. Things that are in high concentration dissipate. Things that are at high elevations fall to lower elevations. Everything in nature has a desire to reduce its energy level to zero. So you're thinking, okay, but what does this have to do with the water molecule? Turns out, everything. Let me start by modeling a group of water molecules as a group of magnets oriented into a chain where the positive side of magnet A is in contact with the negative side of magnet B. For each magnet, their positive side is aligned with another magnet's negative side, right? Wrong. What about the magnets on the end of the chain? Aren't there two magnets on the end that are lacking mates? Of course there are. There's a positive and a negative end that's simply exposed. As a result, the magnets on the end of the chain are uneasy and restless because, of their, unbalanced, because their unbalanced charges are exposed. Now, think about the same model in 3D space. All the magnets in the middle of the mass will have positive and negative ends that are in close contact with one another, so they'll be balanced. Okay, but what about the magnets on the surface of the cluster? Do you think that they might lack a neighboring and opposite charge? As it turns out, they do. And this charge imbalance occurs over the entire outer surface of the cluster. A charge imbalance occurs wherever a magnet's end is exposed without a corresponding mate. Now think small for a second. What is a water droplet? It's a collection of water molecules that behave like magnets. Where do the charge imbalances lie in a droplet of water? If you said, on the droplet surface, then give yourself two points. As a matter of fact, you can calculate the total amount of charge imbalance by measuring the surface area of the water droplet. So let's try to connect some dots here. We said earlier in the tutorial that everything in nature is constantly trying to reduce its energy level to zero. We also said that the energy level of a drop of water is dictated by its surface area. So can you guess which geometric shape has the lowest surface area per unit volume? If you guess the sphere, give yourself another two points. As a result, and in an effort to reduce its surface energy to, level, to zero, raindrops and water droplets are spherical in shape. So let's now build upon the knowledge of surface energy and discuss what happens when a drop of water comes into contact with a solid body. Pour a cup full of water onto a car's metal surface and the water spreads out into a thin film. Pour the same cup full of water onto a car's metal surface that has been freshly waxed, however, and the water turns into hundreds, hundreds of water droplets. The water is the same in both cases. So what's different? Well, it turns out it's the energy level of the car's surface. Solids can have surface energy just like liquids. These solids, however, are unable to reconfigure themselves into different shapes because, well, they're rigid bodies. The important concept to understand at this point is that the solids also embody surface energy. So what happens when a drop of water comes into contact with a solid body? Well, First, the force of gravity tries to flatten out the water droplet, but by doing so, it increases the droplet's surface area. So the liquid fights back to try to pull itself back into a spherical shape. So there's a bit of tug of war that exists between the liquid and gravity. But there's also another tug of war that's taking place. Solids with high surface energies are not content at all. They're, they're miserable and they're interested in lowering their own energy level. When a lower surface energy fluid comes into contact with a higher surface energy solid, a second tug of war erupts. This time is between the solid and the liquid. The solid finds comfort by covering itself with a low surface energy liquid. Even though this action increases the surface area and hence the surface energy of the liquid, is precisely how a solid with high surface energy reduces its energy level by pulling this symbolic low energy comforter over its own high energy surface. This is the primary driving force that causes a liquid to spread over a solid's surface. Now, look at another example, this time whereby we have a solid with 
a low surface energy level. Solids with low surface energy levels have no desire to become involved with a fluid carrying a higher surface energy level. This is the primary driving force that causes a liquid to erupt into hundreds of water droplets. So instead of pulling the fluid over its own surface, low energy solids push back on the droplet's edge to minimize the fluid's footprint that is in contact with the surface. In all cases, the shape of the liquid at rest on the surface can tell us much about the surface energies of both materials. As a matter of fact, the angle that exists between the liquid and the solid, called the contact angle, foretells what's going to happen when a liquid comes into contact with a porous body made from the same material. So let's put all these together and, and make some predictions about a porous material's interaction with a liquid. If the contact angle of a liquid is small, then the liquid will spread or it will wet out the solid. If the solid is porous, the liquid will get absorbed into the porous material structure. Put it another way, the liquid will be wicked into the porous structure. If, on the other hand, the contact angle is large, the liquid will not spread or will not wet the solid. In this situation, a liquid will not wick into a porous structure. So, this concludes part two of our four-part video tutorial. And I hope you better understand the role that surface energy plays with the interaction of a liquid and a solid. Tune in to Thermo TV for the third tutorial to learn about surface energy's role in a capillary system.